dead, it's okay. We can just work together with them, you know? Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. I mean, we don't really even know the recipe yet. Oh, uh, there's no recipe. You just freeze a banana and then you stick it in don't the Don't tell them. Stick it in the what? Stick it in the what? No, it's okay, son. We'll figure it out. It's so watery. And yet there's a smack of ham to it. It's hot ham water. It's the poor carpenter that blames his shoddy tools for the... Ow! Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we're taking a look at the foods from Arrested Development, starting with the famous Bluth frozen bananas, for which it turns out there is a little bit of a recipe. We're going to make Magic Shell, that almost inappropriately fun ice cream topping that hardens as soon as it hits your frozen treat. We're going to start by melting a whole bunch of chocolate in a double boiler, getting it about halfway melted, and then adding a few generous dollops of coconut oil. This is going to help keep the chocolate liquid even at room temperature. There's no super exact recipe here, but you want a ratio of about five to one chocolate to coconut oil. Continue to melt until completely melted, then remove from the heat and set aside, and then go and retrieve your slightly overexposed bananas from the freezer. These have been simply peeled and then impaled, and then we're just going to dip it in the magic shell. And then very quickly before it hardens, we're going to hit it with a couple different toppings. I've got some chopped peanuts, some toffee, and some sprinkles, comma, rainbow. But feel free to go ahead and get creative. Now, I unfortunately can't eat these because as many of you know, I have a deathly banana allergy. I wish there was someone who could help me taste test. What? Why? It's internet sensation Sean Evans. Hey Andrew, I, like the rest of the world, am not allergic to bananas. Music to my ears. So what do you think? You want to try one of these things? These look good. Can I make one? Totally, dude. Batter up. Simply insert your rock hard banana into the loving embrace of the warm molten chocolate. Wow. And so they freeze in the pot. Yep, so you gotta top it quick. So which toppings are you gonna go for? You know, I can't pick just one. I kinda wanna dump the whole topping buffet on this thing. As usual, Sean, I like your style. No wonder you beat me in the calzone cook-off. All right, nice. So now that we have these bananas out onto a tray, we gotta let them harden for just a couple more seconds before digging in. What do you think? Mmm, yeah. Mmm. Damn. Now that's a good frozen banana. I'm sorry you have a weird banana allergy, Andrew. It's not that weird. There are literally dozens of us, but thank you very much for being my taste tester, man. Anytime, Andrew. Peace, bro. What a nice guy. I bet we're going to see more of him in a few minutes. So now this stuff is room temperature stable, so you can jar it and give it to Sean Evans before he leaves. And then it's time to take a turn for savory, because we're going to take a look at hot ham water. This, of course, starts with a big old canned ham, as specified by Lindsay. So we got to peel this sucker open, take a sniff. Oop. yep, that's definitely ham. And be sure not to waste all that included ham water when making hot ham water. Get this fella out of his can and then drop him gently, tenderly into the- Oh Jesus, be careful. Let it simmer for at least 30 minutes so that one flavor can get to know itself. And then it's time to enjoy a hearty spoonful of hot ham water, which I gotta say, not a huge fan of. Yes, there is a smack of ham, but it's so watery. But of course, I need confirmation. Sean, what do you think of this gray, pallid piece of pork? Not bad. You know, I actually thought it'd be worse. I'm gonna go in for another... Oh my god, all that hot sauce over the years seems to have numbed your taste buds. Watery? But it's that kiss of ham that really works. Huh. Well, I stand corrected. I applaud your bravery, but I think it's time that we make a babish version of hot ham water, and that to me screams tonkatsu broth, which starts with pig trotters or pig's feet that I have cut into these one inch thick discs. I've got about four pounds of them that I'm going to place in a large stock pot, cover with cold water, and bring to a simmer. Right off the bat, you're gonna see a whole bunch of gross gray scum float to the top. This is what we want. These are a lot of impurities and nasty stuff that we're getting out of the pig's feet. Then we're gonna take it one step further by straining the pig's feet and using a chopstick, scraping out all the gray gunk that we can get our hands on under some running cold water. Then we're going to place these back in the pot, which of course we've rinsed out, cover again with cold water, and bring again to a rolling simmer. While we're waiting for that to boil, it's time to bring some other flavors to the party. I've got a whole onion cut into quarters, some chopped scallions, and some chopped fresh ginger, all of which I'm going to get some nice dark color on in a nonstick pan over high heat. This is going to bring both color and a whole bunch of flavor to our tonkatsu. And now it's time to let this guy cook for 12 hours. Yes, you heard me right. We want this at a rolling simmer for 12 whole hours, enough time to run out and get a fresh tattoo while you keep an eye on your broth through a sort of makeshift baby monitor. And your patience will be rewarded with a beautiful smell and a thick, creamy tonkatsu broth. That rolling boil has allowed solids in the bones to dissolve and emulsify, and it's going to make for some seriously good ramen. We need this stuff to cool completely before we can refrigerate it, so strain the broth into a smaller pot and place that 
into an ice bath, getting it as cool as possible as quickly as possible before pouring into jars and then refrigerating or freezing. Now this is some hot ham water that I can get behind. We'll take a closer look at tonkatsu ramen in an upcoming episode of Basics with Babish. But for now, we've got one more Bluthian creation to tackle, the corn baller. Now as we saw, the corn baller gets extremely hot and should never be touched, especially if- Dude, I was just thinking about that recurring gag in Arrested Development. Gah! F <laughs> Mother Ooh, okay, so while Sean goes and washes his mouth out with soap and tends to his wounds, we're gonna make my best approximation of corn balls, which is hush puppies. We're combining 120 grams of corn flour, 85 grams of all-purpose flour, a teaspoon and a half of baking powder, half a teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of kosher salt, and half a teaspoon of smoked paprika or cayenne pepper. Whisk until totally combined, and then in a separate bowl, we're going to combine our wet ingredients, that is, three quarters of a cup of buttermilk and two whole eggs. We're then going to whisk those to combine, making sure that we've got the eggs and buttermilk totally incorporated, and then add those to the dry ingredients. The purpose of doing this, much like in pancake batter, we want to prevent the buildup of gluten. We're even going to leave it a little lumpy like pancake batter, which is going to result in lighter, fluffier hush puppies. Now let's talk fillings. We've got lots of options, chopped scallions, chopped jalapeno, whole corn, but I'm going to take a page out of the Sean Evans playbook and just put them all in there. This is after we've let the batter sit for 10 minutes to let any undissolved pieces of flour soak up more moisture and we're going to gently fold our fillings into the batter. Now let's move the corn baller over to a safer, more fireproof space and use a small ice cream or cookie dough scoop to portion out maybe six separate tablespoons of batter, which we're going to fry up to golden, puffy, crispy completion. I mean, just look at these things. I can't think of anything finer to have come out of the South than, well, maybe all of the most delicious foods in the world. So never mind. We're plating these guys up with some simple tartar sauce. Now let's rip one open and see what kind of texture we've got on the inside. Ethereal, light, fluffy, flavorful. I know this isn't a very faithful recreation of what they made on Arrested Development, but I will take any excuse I can to make hush puppies, because oh my god, they are good. I would happily induct these into the Clean Plate Club all myself, but I'm trying to be just a little bit healthy, so I'm gonna go have Sean help me off camera. Hopefully the swelling has gone down. 